Alrighty, this is Diesel with People News. Okay, uh, notice this is going to be a pretty long video, but very important. Okay, to think outside the box. Why? Because we don't never look straight forward. We always look around us to be able to protect ourselves by any means necessary. Let's add that to property, right? We have a right, an inalienable right to property. It cannot be changed in a privilege. Um, unless you go into commerce or something like that, and I still kind of disagree with that even. Um, but, that being said, when you got your own property where you live, and it's not in commercial activity, they cannot change it into a privilege, and which is what they're doing. So, anything I say is just my opinion, okay? This is educational purposes only, alright? But let's uh, proceed forward, shall we? What? Alright. Actually, rights impose a duty. So rights are above duties. See, the right imposes the duty. Where one has a right, the other owes him a duty to, what? Not trespass upon his property. It's called a common law trespass. And that's where we get into... I can pull that. Now, uh... Educational purposes only. I'm not giving legal advice, right? Um, this is the reason why I, if you do paperwork, um, instead of going by the civil rules procedure, you can go by both. But uh, when he says of common law trespass, right? Uh, it's that uh, uh, you caused harm by a way of trespass. All right. This is when I talked about before, right? Uh, complainant, wrongdoer. Right, we're not going by plaintiff defender. Okay, that is civil Roman procedure, civil law Roman. All right, we're going by our country common law. All right, you trespass upon, you trespass, you cause me harm by way of trespass. All right, you, you know, uh, intervene on my rights of uh, joint profit property. Okay, you arrested me without a warrant, all that. You trespassed. You confiscated my property, my body. Um, you know, my, what you guys call children. CPS grabs your children. They trespassed, right? To do the Roman civil law, which kings have power, right? But common law, we have power. All right, let's go. Property. Where we get common law trespass. Now this is Black's Law Dictionary, 4th edition. Property, that which is peculiar or proper to any person, that which belongs exclusively to one, in the strict legal sense, an aggregate of rights which are guaranteed and protected by the government. Protected by the government. All right. They're supposed to protect your rights and not for the county to steal it. Well, I'll be darn. That's why it's unalienable. Unable to place a lien upon them because they are our property. And unalienable. You can't place a lien upon them. It's You can't touch them. It's trespass. It's a common law trespass because our rights are the common law. All of these rights that we have in common. Uh, the term is said to extend to every species of valuable right and interest. More specifically, ownership, the unrestricted and exclusive right to a thing. The right to dispose of a thing in every legal way to possess it, to use it, and to exclude everyone else from interfering with it. If it's not my property, or if it is my property and I have the right to exclude everyone else from interfering with it, wouldn't that mean like driver's license and registration and insurance? Yeah, like she said earlier, who said that we can't go faster than 75 miles an hour on the interstate? Also think about it this way, people, okay? If they cannot enter your home without a warrant because it's your property, your private property, then that means they cannot come and confiscate your property. 
because it's an inalienable right. You have a right to property. Oh, that would be them bills of attainer and bills of pains and penalties. Because, well, you know, we said so, and there's a sign there. I could care less what your sign says. Unless I cause injury, loss, or harm to another man, no man has standing to claim a right of cause of action. No bills of attainer. They're strictly prohibited in our form of government. Article 1, Section 9, Federal, and Article 1, Section 10. That's the coup. Same as corporation. Government. You know, um, behind all closed doors, there's got to be a man and woman making a claim of some sort, right? The county of, well, who's this Mr. and Mrs. County, right? This is Roman civil law is what they're putting you in. Real common law, there's got to be a real man and woman to cause, a, a, do a claim on you. Folks, as I've showed before, civil is the Roman civil law. That's that code, that code of civil procedure and all that crap they brought in in 1881 and 1878. They brought back the Roman civil law, which is under the monarchy. Okay. And like it says in Bouvet's Law Dictionary 1856, that it's in... If you pay attention, why do you think England cops, England cops are doing the exact same thing as our cops doing to the peoples, right? The Roman civil law. They're bypassing common law. Even England has common law, but they've been using Roman civil law as well. Of course, through bills of pains and penalties. If you do this, that's a fine or jail time. Where's the victim? Where's the accuser? Where's the man who's got standing to claim a right to a cause of action here? Oh, well, you know, but we don't need that. We can prosecute by information. No, you cannot. It's almost like our founder said that in the Sixth Amendment. That's right. All criminal blah, 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 is supposed to be done by all capital offenses or, or uh, infamous crimes are to be prosecuted by indictment only. I'm going to pause here again, right? Because I keep on, and again, it's my opinion. I'm not giving legal advice, okay? Uh, but look, your children, wink, wink, children, um, is your property, okay? They cannot trespass. So when CPS comes involved and it interferes with your property, you must get the name of that woman or man that's coming over there uh, kidnapping your offspring right you got to make a claim a way of trespass causing you harm and causing your offspring harm right now he's gonna be in a mental dispute with his mind because he's been uh, ripped and torn from the family that family courts don't care about they don't care about the offspring's feelings Bunch of never mind liars. <coughs> There's no getting around that. Okay? But they have. But they fundamentally altered our form of government. Again. Uh, let's see, that uh, dominion or indefinite right of use or disposition which one may lawfully exercise over particular things or subjects. The exclusive right of possession, enjoying and disposing of a thing. Hmm. The highest right a man can have to anything, being used for that right, which one has to lands and tenements, goods or chattels, goods, automobile, which no way depends on another man's courtesy. I don't need another man's permission to utilize any of my frickin' property. None. And therefore, we can't delegate that power to government. Because if no man has that power, then no man, as a set of men, the people, can dele delegate a power that we do not possess ourselves first to government. Because maxim of law. Rule of law here. What I cannot do in my person, I cannot do through the agency of another. 
government is an agency, agents, right? So if I can't do it, then sure the heck can't create a constitution creating government and delegate a power that I do not possess myself first. It just it's, it's, it's literally impossible. I have the right to defend my rights. That comes from the law of nature. That's right. But over here under personal property, in broad and general sense, everything that is the subject of ownership, not coming under a denomination of real estate. So we're not talking about personal property as real estate. Real estate falls under regular property. Okay. A right or interest in things personal, or right or interest less than freehold in realty, or any right or interest which one has in things movable. Right? The term is generally applied to property of a personal and movable nature, as opposed to property of a local or immovable character, such as land or houses. Okay? The latter being called real property versus personal property. This also goes into what was said before, our chattel, right? Our sons and daughters are our chattel, our property, our personal property. They have no authority over our property. That's a common law trespass. Get off my property. Now, you're trespassing the law. Right says the law. Okay? Proper diction, folks. All right, let's go back. Why are we duty bound? Because the states created the federal government and we created the states. And the only reason government exists is to what? Secure the rights of the people. And when the federal government is operating outside of its constitutional boundaries, your rights are not secured. So how do we interpose? See, that word interpose means to eclipse. And it's the state's authority, the state's right, and their duty to step up and say to the federal government, no, you cannot exercise that power in our state because it is not a power that we delegated to you. We must stand and say no to protect the rights of the people because that's the only reason that we exist. How do you interpose? The several states who formed the Constitution, see, I'm not making this up, being what, sovereign and independent, have the unquestionable right to judge of infractions against the Constitution. Why? Because they created the Constitution. And that a nullification by those, what? Sovereignties of all unauthorized acts is the rightful remedy. What does Jefferson say? The power of the state to check and balance unauthorized authority exercised by the government rests in our power to say no. And if we don't have the authority to say no, then we are not free. Remember, if they're made in pursuance to the Constitution, then, they're, uh, then, then they are the supreme law of the land. But if they are not, then we say no. We're jumped up 55. Alexander Jefferson says this. There is no position which depends on clearer principles than that every act of a, what is that? Delegated authority, contrary to the tenor of the commission under which it's exercised, which is a long way of saying original intent. If you're not applying the Constitution the way we intended it, then your acts are null and void. Yeah, if you're not... I'm going to pause there too, right? They keep on saying the Constitution is a living document. No, that's not the original intent. They're circumventing where they can confiscate your rights as misleading you. If you don't have subject matter jurisdiction from the Constitution, your act is void. Fine and simple. No ifs, ands, or buts greater power than we are lawfully allowed to exercise as an individual.
obligation do you have to submit yourself to an authority asserted that has no legal authority? Just this one. Hmm. Just the one that you rationalize in your mind. Are we supposed to be using our brains, folks? The only reason we submit to unlawful authority is number one, we've been trained to. Number two, we're too comfortable to do anything else. Or number three, we're afraid. Number four, you imprisoned yourself to have a one track mind. You're, you're always just looking straight forward. You're not looking around you. You imprisoned yourself. But we need to understand the authority that we possess as the ultimate check and balance rests in peaceful non-compliance of unconstitutional acts. Null and void. We shall not comply. We must know that. We must believe that. We must enforce that. Samuel Adams said, he said, it's a serious consideration that should weigh heavy upon our hearts that ages and millions yet unborn will be the miserable sharers of our experience. When we comply with unlawful authority, we give that unlawful authority authority. We give it power, not just over ourselves, but over future generations. We create a... That's what my grandparents did for me. My parents did for me and what I did to my offsprings, right? But I'm trying to teach them now, okay? I'm trying to create a remedy of my past mistakes, people. But if you keep on complying with these unlawful demands, it's not going to stop there. It's going to keep growing and taking more rights from your kids. Well, it's not going to affect me now. No. It's going to affect your offspring. I never thought I'd see the day that there was some type of uh, insect saying that everybody must wear a cover over their mouth. But yet, all these years, I complied with everything, right? And been misled and tricked. And then half the, over half the country believed in it. Right? What's going to happen next time with your offsprings? Just saying. Remember, Hillary Clinton said, Never let a good crisis go to waste. What she's talking about is taking more rights away not give us rights take it mental precedent that says well we've been doing that way forever so it must be okay which means our children will grow up believing that this stolen authority is actual lawful authority <laughs> Ben's Maserati. Right? This is good here. Let's pretend I that I knew when Ben and his wife were going on vacation. And I knew that they were going to the Bahamas for three weeks. The day they jumped on the plane, I stole his Maserati. I drove around for three weeks. Right? Everybody who saw me driving Ben's car assumed I had a legal authority to do so, right? But I stole it. Do I have a legal authority? Assumptions and presumptions. Authority? So Ben and his wife come back from vacation, all tan and relaxed and happy, and they notice the car is gone. And I've been driving it for three weeks. 
Does Ben have to say, oh, well, you know, it's been three weeks. I guess they own it now. No. What does Ben have the right to do? He has the right to take it back. But here in Texas, because I live in Texas, they're basically saying, no, I don't. They're saying. In law, we have these two things. Assume we have the right to take it back. If our property's been stolen from us, we have every right to take it back. Without a transfer legally of authority. His absence, his negligence, never transferred authority to me over that vehicle, which means he retains the right to say no. <laughs> Does he have to sue me to get his car back if I've been driving it for three weeks? No. Ben, having to sue me to get his car back because I've been driving it for three weeks is not only unnecessary, it's ridiculous, and it is dangerous. Yeah. Because then we're going to set it up that, oh, well, if somebody can steal your stuff and then you got to sue him to get it back. Uh, no. And, and we don't need to call the police. We don't need to get to sheriff. We don't need nothing. When another man takes your property, you have every right to reclaim your property that's been unlawfully taken from you. Plain and simple to assume authority over our lives for a very long time. Do we have to sue them to get it back? No. Suing the federal government to get out what legally belongs to us is not only unnecessary, it's ridiculous and dangerous. Yep. Asset forfeiture right there, people. You got to sue to get your property back. You worked hard for that money, what we call money, all right? It's banknotes. But the courts are saying, hey, you, they can do asset forfeiture. No, they can't. Because that was your property. You earned it of one way or another. Without due process. You know, they cannot confiscate it without due process, which is what they're doing. Oh, my God. Why? Because suing the government to get back what already belongs to you is like Ben suing me to get his car back, showing up in court, and finding out that the judge and the jury are all my family members. <laughs> right. I love that part, okay? So, we go with property tax, right? Because this is tax season on property, all right? So, what you're doing is you're going to try to sue in court against the attorney, the county, the city, and the judge, which they're all, what? Family members. Okay? So, it's the same principle, but when you jump from one side to the other, that's what you're doing. You're fighting in civil procedure against a family member, a group of family members uh, backing one another up. And over them, stealing, what? Your property. Right? You don't there's no law saying that you have to follow, uh, file for a deed. But yet, um, they say you have to pay property tax. Okay? No, that's unlawful. That's for corporations. But that's what they're doing. They're unlawfully stealing your property, and you're going in to s try to claim it back, and the the rigged system of family members and saying, eh, nope, you can't have it back. Oh, well, we know it's stolen. We just can't give it back. Because that we would admit that we was wrong. That we stole the property, which we did. We're just not going to say we stole it. We're going to blame it on taxes. Right? So if the state is suing the federal government, where is the state suing the federal government? In federal courts, with judges that are appointed by the federal government. When the states sue the federal government to get their power back in federal court, what they're admitting is the federal government is the ultimate authority on its own limit of power. 
And when we sue the states to get our power back, what we are saying is our state constitutions are null and void, that they have no authority, and we're begging for what already belongs to us by creative right. That's why we... Right? You are begging for your property rights inalienable from people that's stealing it. People going to jail for criminal offense for stealing all that, but it's absolutely okay for the counties and cities to steal your property? No, it's not. You must say, we will not comply. Peaceful non-compliance is the most powerful tool. Peaceful non-compliance is the people enforcing the supreme law of the land when the government is acting unlawfully. Imagine that. A little bit on the sheriff here. The sheriff is... Yeah, okay. Um, this video has already been long enough. It's very important on the sheriff, but the video has already been long enough. Right? So, argument's sake, right? You have a right to property, ownership, inalienable rights. So when they come to try to confiscate your property, the sheriff is to arrest everybody. Say, no, 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 you're not taking this man's property. He has a right to it. You cannot just throw him on the streets because somebody in the backwoods that's not standing up as a man and woman making this claim, saying that, you know, hey, he owes me X amount of money. So since he didn't pay it, uh, I'm allowed to confiscate his property. And even though it's a $100,000 property uh, for $5,000 uh, debt, I, I'm, I'm allowed to steal this $100,000 property. No, the sheriff is to, to no. Anybody comes on this is what? Causing you harm by way of trespass. Right? And if that sheriff comes on there, you go after that sheriff, the man, not the uniform, right? The man caused you harm by way of trespass. So he, when he gives that piece of paper to you and you know it's unlawful, now you go after the man in that uniform. Caused you harm by a trespass of a theft of property. Whether it's your body, whether it's your land, or whether it's your pecans <laughs> on the tree. Right? That's still theft. It's your property. Anyway, this is Diesel Weezy People News. Wake up, people. Alrighty. Diesel Weezy People News.